The Christmas season is once again upon us. So whilst everyone else is getting stuck into some gold, Frankenstein and there, you can get stuck into some gaming. And what better way to spice things up this festive season than with some ROM hacks. That's right, ROM hacks. It's what Jesus would have wanted. Yeah, ROM hacks and remakes. Breathing new life into classic games since, well, ages actually. The first hacks were simple code changes on legacy computer systems and early consoles like the Atari VCS or 2600. And throughout the 80s and 90s, some of this power was given to gamers in the form of pokes on home computers or by utilising cartridges such as the Game Genie or Action Replay. And whilst not ROM hacks per se, they did give players a taste of what could be achieved by modifying code executed in real time. Nowadays, classic games have been broken apart, reassembled, disassembled, not disassembled, to create all new adventures, quality of life improvements, and more. Creative developers spend weeks, months, or even years in some instances, perfecting their hacks. And it's up to us to dig in and enjoy the fruits of their labor. So without further ado, let's take a look at seven amazing, mostly, ROM hacks that I'll be playing today using my faithful sidekick, the Mr. Mr. But all of these will work equally well using an emulator of your choice or even original hardware. Let's go. I'm sure you're familiar with the Master System version of the original Sonic the Hedgehog. The Blue Blur's first 8-bit outing is a markedly different experience compared to its Genesis counterpart. It's not bad by any means, it's just different. A solid game in its own right. Sonic the Hedgehog on Master System issues all-out speed and action in favour of a more thoughtful platforming adventure. Highly regarded for its level design and for the most part, smooth flowing graphics. For anyone familiar with its 16-bit brethren, it will likely be the artwork and music that they'll find most jarring. Now more than 30 years after it made its debut on Sega's 8-bit machine, the Hogmeister himself is back with reworked graphics and music, all while retaining the level design and layout that made the original game so great. This recent release by Slogra from November 2022 is a stunning example of what ROM hacking is capable of. As you can see and hear, these changes make Sonic the Hedgehog on Master System a completely different experience altogether. But underneath its shiny new veneer is the exact same game we know and love. A stunning effort that fans of the series will no doubt thoroughly enjoy. Yeah, Pac-Man. It's no secret, Pac-Man on the Atari 2600 contributed to the infamous video game crash of 1983. The heavily promoted title, a port of the beloved arcade game. Pac-Man on the Atari VCS is a poor facsimile of everyone's favorite pill-popping pizza face Ghostbuster. For a long, long time, it was thought that a faithful Pac-Man on Atari's primitive wood paneled machine might not even be possible. But as Dr. Malcolm famously once said, Life uh, finds a way. Beginning development in 2007, Atari programmer Dintar816 has, over the years, created and refined the definitive version of Namco's beloved Pac-Man for Atari. The latest iteration, known as Pac-Man 8K V8, is nigh on perfect as an attempt to finally bring home all the fun and excitement to the 2600. Indeed, fire the game up and there's no mistaking this is Pac-Man. From the title screen to the gameplay itself, and even the coffee breaks between stages, what has been achieved here is nothing short of remarkable, and it's playing great here on the Mister. I strongly suggest you try it out, and even play it side by side next to the official release, to demonstrate just why the 1982 original is so derided. Doom on the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, it's a thing, it's all right. I bought it back in the day and I had a good time. Yeah, you kind of take the rough with the smooth. The original GBA Doom engine was based on the already cut down Atari Jaguar one, if you can believe that. And whilst it gets the job done, serious cutbacks were made in order to make it work on Nintendo's 32-bit handheld. The improved Game Boy version here though has proper Doom maps. Yeah, 
the full unadulterated maps from the PC version. Improved music, sound effects, textures and more. The whole thing is just a night and day difference. Running at a much smoother frame rate when compared side by side with the original is truly an incredible feat. Known as PC Doom Total Conversion, it was released in 2001 by Kippy Kip. And of course there are better ways to play Doom, but if you enjoy rolling around with a GBA in tow, this is well worth throwing onto your flash cart of choice so you can enjoy proper Doom anywhere on Ninty's diminutive handheld. Well done. Another Sonic hack here, and this time is Sonic 3 Complete for the Genesis slash Mega Drive. Released in 2013, this popular patch offers the ultimate in fan service to what some consider to be the greatest 2D Sonic games ever. Essentially, it's Sonic 3 and Knuckles, a ROM that itself has been floating around the internet since, well, probably as long as there's been Genesis emulators. But this diverges from that release in many, many ways. Offering fans of the series the ability to customise their Sonic 3 outing to the nth degree with altered zone order, player sprite options, difficulty levels and music choices. Combine all this with a bevy of quality of life tweaks and features and you really have a lot of Sonic to sink your teeth into. Hyper Streetcar and if you haven't already guessed, it's a complete top to bottom revamp of classic Mario Kart on the SNES. Replacing Mario and Pals with a roster of Street Fighter 2 characters. It's a little older than some of the other modified ROMs on this list, but it still holds up as one of the better Mario Kart hacks and a must play for Street Fighter or Mario Kart fans alike. In addition to the characters, tracks have been thoughtfully updated. Green and red shells have been replaced by Hadoukens, and one of my personal highlights is that we now have Dao Sim in place of Lakitu. It's Yoga Fire. <laughs> now personally, I'm not very good at the plumber's first out in here on the SNES. Uh, Mario Kart on the Game Boy Advance was more my jam. But it's not hard to appreciate the love and effort that went into this conversion. Just play it, it's really good. An older ROM hack now, well, Technically a bootleg, since it was created for commercial purposes. I should probably put this in its own video, but I'm too far in now, so here we go. Yeah, it's Sonic on Game Boy. Forget Sonic 2 or 3, those are for dweebs. This is Sonic 6. It's better. It's just too fast and too much fun. It's twice as good as Sonic 3. Ah, uh, no, nah, it really isn't, obviously. <laughs> it's rubbish. Sometimes found on multi-cart games of the late nighters, Sonic 6 is every bit as bad as you think. This particular example is a modified Speedy Gonzales ROM for the original Game Boy, itself a middling platformer. Speedy Gonzales was likely the chosen victim due to its moderately fast gameplay that included collecting stuff, bouncing around a bit and getting impaled on spikes. Aside from the main character graphics and a few static images here and there, little else is altered. The Looney Tunes theme greets you on the title screen, and in fact all the music, level graphics, enemies and layouts are identical to the Mexican rodent's portable outing. Look, I know it's nothing too remarkable, but I'm always fascinated to see protected mascots like Mario and Sonic on alternative systems. This is peak bootleggery at its awful yet fascinating best. Loosely based on a 1968 film Yellow Submarine, The Beatles' Adventures in Pepperland is a complete overhaul of the Super Mario Bros. 2 code. Taking control of any one of the Fab Four, your job is to bring music and colour back to the world by defeating the meanies in the surreal world of Pepperland. Featuring Beatles hits from the Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band, this conversion has become something of a modern classic in its own right, with an active community rallying around the game. If you're a fan of the Beatles or weird Mario hacks, have a look. It's pretty fun. So that's seven ROM hacks that are sure to keep you busy, most of which are quality passion projects that deserve some attention. Not you. Now, I don't need to tell you this is barely scratching the surface of what's out there. I've not even begun to look at all the hacks and modifications for the classic Sonic series, Mario World series, Pokemon games, 8 and 16-bit RPGs, beat-em-ups and more. 
The ROM hacking scene is an oft overlooked sideshow, but it's worth picking through the duds to find the true gems out there that are worthy of your time. If you want to get started, I recommend going over to romhacking.net and familiarize yourself with the patching tools. It's not that hard to do, and it'll open up a rabbit hole of tweaks, mods, and complete reworks of classic titles. There's even an online patcher you can use over at hack64.net. I'll leave links to everything in the description. And I think that's it. Have a happy Christmas, everyone, and I'll see you next year, I guess. Well, I won't. You'll see me. That's, that's, what, that's what this is. I'm done.